So we did these first two questions yesterday. We are going to just finish this up real quick. So we're still talking rate of change, right? So we have this table here. It says selected values of function h are shown in the table above. So you want to make sure you pay attention to, it says function of h and h of t, that's a function of h, right? So we know these are function values and not rate of change values or something else. So pay attention to what it's telling you and what the table is so that you're using the numbers in the correct manner. We want the average rate of change, we know what that means, of h over this interval. So the first thing we write down, we're going to find the average rate of change. That would be h of 7 minus h of 2 over 7 minus 2. So the rest of this piece of cake, right? What's h of 7? Negative 4. Minus, what's h of 2? 3. Over 7 minus 2, which is 5. And that gives me negative 7 over 5. Now, some things you want to pay attention to, and you probably already realize it even if you've never really thought about it. Um, you're more likely to make a mistake on something simple and ridiculous than on something difficult. Is that true? Like when you get stuff back and you're like, oh my God, I put 2 times 3 equals 5. I don't, what was I doing, right? My point being this, you're, you know, once you substitute numbers in, this is really is, it is a piece of cake, right? Is it also easy to accidentally pull the wrong number off a chart? Absolutely. Is it also easy just to subtract wrong even though you know how to do it correctly? Absolutely. So just make sure you're paying attention to that step too and not rushing through it just because it's simple. Because when it is, I mean, I get it. You need to go spend more time on other things, but let's try and minimize those careless mistakes there. All right, so then here we have that k is a continuous linear function with an average rate of change of negative 3. Tell me something about the average rates of change of a linear function. They're the same. They're constant. It's the slope, but it's, it's constant, right? So it's really, the average is just always the same on those. Um, so if k, now k is not a value. A lot of times k can be a missing value, but in this, <coughs> in this case, k is an, a function. k has a y-intercept of 5, and I want the x-intercept of k, right? So to do this algebraically, um, we're talking about average rates of change. That is slope. When you go to find the slope in general, what do you need to find a slope? What kind of information do I have to have? Change in y over change in x. How many x's do I need? How many y's? Two. So I need two, two points, right? Two ordered pairs? Yes? And so they gave me the y-intercept, and I'm looking for the x-intercept. So if the y-intercept is 5, what's the ordered pair look like? 0, 5. And you have to know if it's 0, 5 or 5, 0 and be confident in that, right? The x-intercept would be what? Okay. Yeah, this is 0, and then, yeah, we could put a line, right? But we're going to put a variable, and why don't we just put x? I mean, we could put anything, but x. I don't know what the x value is. That's what I'm looking for, right? So just like um, some of those that were on your, uh, your homeworks, you're just, we're finding slope. I have a variable for one of them, but it's still exactly the same stuff. So I can say I'm looking for my average rate of change. That is, this is k, so this is going to be k of x minus k of 0, right? Because those are my two x values, over x minus 0. You okay with that? Then I just substitute it in. What is k of x? What does this represent? Yeah, zero. It represents the y value. k of x is the y value when x is x. So when I have x value there, my y value is zero. Minus, what's k of zero? Five over x minus zero. See where all that came from? Just substituting it in. It's still just slope. What is, so when I, uh, Simplify this, I get negative 5 over x, okay? But I need to find x. What is What does this that we just found right here represent? The slope, right? What do we know the slope is equal to? Negative 3. How do we know that? 
because that tells us, right? That's why when you're reading, maybe circling things and realizing you actually know this, this is equal to negative 3. So that means that negative 5 is equal to negative 3x, and x is equal to 5 thirds. Okay, we're good? What questions you got? You cannot be afraid of the variables, but the steps are the same. It's still slope. It's the same stuff. You just have to understand what your what the notations mean and what your numbers are there. Okay, we're good with that? All right, so go ahead and put this in your ISN. I believe it goes on page 24.